I hate the fact that we feel like we have to choose every single time, like three, three months, that's 12 weeks postpartum. Like I, I come from a country where women are allowed to stay home for a year. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you don't want to take that full year, you can transfer that paternity over to your husband if you wow. want to, or your partner. What? Oh yeah. What's up y'all, it's Ashley. I'm Fee. It's Melody. And Cody here. And you've tapped into The, the Mama's, Mama's Den. Den. All right, all right. What's going on, guys? Hi. Hi. Hi, Cody. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm all right. How You're are you? All right. I see you've got your <laughs> white black love is beautiful oh. sweater on. No, really, it's black. My white black love. Your white black love. My white kids, sweatshirt. Wait, funny story. So my kids have a black one and they have a white one. And the other day they were like, we want to wear... We want to wear the white love. White love. Oh. White love is beautiful. <laughs> I was like, can we just not say it that way? <laughs> Which means we're going to have to have a gray. <laughs> we're going to get a gray sweater. Yeah, Mix it part. up. Confuse everybody. That part. Um, What's new? Oh, oh, my book comes out tomorrow, everybody. Yay! Yay! So excited. Tell us about it. Um, it's a prompted journal called The Forever Journal. I created it um, in honor of my sister, Rebecca. My nephew, he called me when she was like, I think he was like around 11, and he started asking me like a bunch of questions about my sister. And I was like, dang, man, I wish she would have like left him something. But I mean, obviously she didn't know she was going to die at 24. And then it just made me think like I had all these, like my baby's first year journals about my kid, but there wasn't really like a ton of journals that were out like about me. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I should make one. And so I created a journal that is like a keepsake for the parent to fill out for their child. And there are like the, I would say there's a one page that's specifically about like birth, like where you were born, but anyone can fill this journal. Mm -hmm. Like your grandparents can, mm -hmm. you can like low key just admit that page if you're filling it out, like you're an aunt or an uncle. Um, but also like sometimes aunt and uncles raise kids and grandmas mm -hmm. yep. and grandparents. So it's really beautiful. I'm really proud of it. Um, she was an AKA. So like I purposely made it like green with like greens and gold. I like it. I'm into yeah. it. It's it. like a little hint to her. Um, and she loved being an AKA. So I was like, okay, like green was a thing with her. Um, and it, also when she passed away, they called like behind the Ivy when someone passes away. So like I just, just wanted to like make an homage to her and I'm really 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 excited about it like Yay. I can't wait for everybody to get one me too I can't wait, wait. I've to never thought about this did you have you filled it out I have not yet it's mm. so weird because like when I create things I like to just throw them <laughs> into the universe they're out into the world and now <laughs> and there's I, somebody else's it go away for everyone else <laughs> yes but no mm -hmm. I actually plan on filling it out and I thought about that because I'm like wow if you have multiple children like mm -hmm. do you have to fill one out for each kid but I'm thinking no because like when you leave things for your children like yeah. sometimes it's one thing I, I envision like a family Bible or something like it's something that you give to your kids and it's a keepsake. Maybe the oldest can keep it or, you know, and they share it. But I'm going to fill one out and have their dad fill one mm -hmm. out and then they'll have them to share. Or, right, because we're trying to sell books here, you should get four. Yeah. One for each of your yes. children. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, but also, I'm trying to think of people like, I don't want to fill that out four times. But I I'm mean, thinking of a digital copy kidding. at some point, too, yeah. though. Like, that's oh, okay. on the horizon. Yeah. And because the the experience with each kid is so different. This is true. You, know? yeah. so yeah. you change. Right. Yeah. But the questions are for you, though. Just FYI, they're not about your kid. They're literally, yeah, yeah. like, really beautiful questions. Like, I... I also was so conscious and trying to be very inclusive of how people identify themselves and just like that experience. So I, I put questions in there on like, why did, I, why did I get married? But also why I didn't get married or why we got divorced. So I tried to cover like all of these things. Mm -hmm. Cause I remember I asked Chia like, why did your parents get divorced? He was like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then we asked his dad together and he told us, and he was like 26 years old. He never asked his parents why they got divorced and he didn't know. And he like, just was like, Oh, but then even hearing that story like changed him. And he was like, wow, I didn't know. Mm. So it's really personal things. I thought about Cody when I was, um, and Nalo because both of their fathers passed away, like prior to them getting married. So I wanted to include questions too, like things that you would want to ask your parent, like when you have a baby, when you're getting married, like what advice I would give you, like mm. on wh like why to choose love or why I fell in love or like my biggest heartbreak and what I learned about that mm. and just different things that I feel like we want to ask our parents, but it's also celebratory. Like don't think of it like a deaf book, mm -hmm. like something that your parents may not be comfortable talking to you, but they might be comfortable like writing it down and mm -hmm. sharing with you that way. But I'm just so excited for people to learn more about their family 
it also will be dope if you filled it out with your parent. Like mm -hmm. if you talk while you're doing it, it would be really cool too, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah. very therapeutic. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I love the name, the Forever Journal. Yes. Because yes. <laughs> memories are forever. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Yes, so Cute. I'm really excited about that. Yay, we're excited Cute. for you. You can get it everywhere. Because, you know, I didn't self-publish it this time, okay? So I got it published, published by a publishing company. Um, and so I'm really excited. It'll be at Target. It's at Barnes & Noble. It's going to be a Target, girl. Target, baby. Girl, we live there. Okay. <laughs> um, Amazon. And then I also sent them a list of a bunch of, like, small books, bookstores. But also, if you are a smaller bookstore and you would like to carry it, Hit me up in my DMs yeah. so my publishing company can know about you. You could carry my book. No, Thank I'm you. excited. Love yes. That. I love this. Run awesome. it up. <laughs> <laughs> what about y'all? What's going on with you guys? I'm tired. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I'm just going to have that answer every week. <laughs> tired. That is my answer. That's the reality. I'm tired. I'm tired. Yeah. I'm like, no, I just have so many shows. I'm traveling a lot. It's a lot. Jared and I are both working a lot, and there's a lot of – Pass the baton. See you next week. Pass the baton. Yeah. See you next week. And it's it's a very, very busy season. So yeah. I'm just taking it one day at a time. Um, what about you, Felicia? Rules. I know you're working on things, too. What you working on, girl? Yeah, I'm working on something very exciting. Um, we launched our first event for my nonprofit, Somebody's Mama, which is very exciting. Yay! And it's geared. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to gear it towards because I speak so much about motherhood and mental health mm -hmm. and wellness and all the things. Um, and sometimes it's really hard to narrow things down yeah. for myself. It can be very overwhelming. Um, so the nonprofit is about creating wellness spaces like events or whatever that looks like for working moms. So whether that's you're an entrepreneur, whether you are a nine to five mom, whether you are a stay at home mom and that's your job, it is literally creating that space for you to come and pour into yourself. So mm -hmm. sometimes there'll be events that are specifically just for the moms, but then there's be other times where moms can bring their child. So I feel for myself when I was growing up, um, my mom worked so much and I only wanted to just spend quality time with her, but I wasn't able to do that. She wasn't able to do that. So to create this space for moms to come and spend quality time, whether it's like you guys are in a sound bath together or whether you're creating a floral arrangement, um, that was very important to me. Cause I, I know we all feel the same as like we work so much. And sometimes I'm like, I kind of just want like a little wellness moment with my child, but what does that look like? She yeah. can't come to, or, or he can't come to a sound bath with me. Like, you know, so creating that, and I'm very excited. Aww. It It's um, surrounded by, it's surrounded around Mother's Day. That's when we're gonna launch it. It just felt very appropriate to do that. Um, so yeah. That's exciting. Awesome. I love this for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Cody Co, what you doing? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? How many cups of coffee are we you on? You know, today? we're we're mid spring break over here. Oh, the man. thing is two weeks long. Two oh. weeks. So that's um, intense. Yeah. Yeah. Two weeks. It was not two weeks when I was in school. Two no. weeks is crazy. Uh, we're taking advantage. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because who's paying for this child care? <laughs> oh. Us. To work. Us. Soccer camp. Ow. Drop them off. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. it's basically school except yeah. soccer, and um, that just is what it is. So trying to survive. Mm -hmm. Yikes. Yeah, that's kind of wild when you think about it too, because I have always no, I wasn't always a stay-at-home mother. I think when Amira was three mm -hmm. or four, no four, that's when I started staying home, like not working at all as far as like an income coming in, and Chia was just my primary provider, and I never. I never think about that. Like, like when spring people, break? No, uh -huh. because I have my kids all the time. But I'm like, what do y'all, what, what do you guys do when, if you work in an office and your kid is on spring break or, like, what do people do with their kids? Camp. Do they just call yeah. off? Literally camp. Oh. Yeah. Wait, wait. So what's the structure of your life at this point, right? Because y'all homeschool. We do. So four years in, you were homeschooling her. Well, no. So uh, my mom started homeschooling her. Well, okay. My, I worked in an office uh -huh. in um, home health care agency and I was in HR. Uh -huh. So she probably was like around one when my mom started keeping her. Yeah. Then all my friends was like, can your mom keep our kids? And then that's when my mom started homeschooling all of oh, them. Oh, wow. Yeah. So she started homeschooling Amir before I did. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. And then I actually didn't actually homeschool Amira alone till we moved to California. So she was oh. probably six or seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. But my mom was running it the entire time. Wow. So when you quit yeah. your job mm -hmm. when she was four, 
you right? Is that what you said? Yeah, she was like around four. Yeah, the the the, the business closed. Yeah, yeah. And then you stayed home full time with her and well, your mom. Uh, yeah. So I stayed home and I went back to to school. Uh, I went back to college and um, got a little more knowledge. <laughs> I got my associate's degree. So when I wasn't in class, I was taking ballet or ballet met. I got back into dancing. So I was like around 27 years old. I was like, okay, I'm going to finish my ballet career. And I I went back into ballet and I was in school full time. And so my mom kept a mirror for me during the day. She was in Ohio. In Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. She still was homeschooling her. Hmm. until we moved to Cal- California. What was that transition like? I'm curious, yeah. especially in terms of like your mental, you know, you go from, I'm still pursuing my career, mm-hmm. my dreams. Yeah. I have this child, like, and then you move. What what happens? Devastation. Yeah. Sadness. Yeah. <laughs> well, you moved for opportunities. Yes, but Maybe remember, I had to restart. That, yeah. that would yes. be the third time that I, so I had my life with my boyfriend at the time, which was not Chia, and did not go to <laughs> both of us. My boyfriend at the time did not go to the college that he got accepted into to play basketball. And I didn't go to the school I got accepted to dance because we were like, we want to stay together in oh, Columbus. Heck no. Girl, Gosh. both of us were very dumb. <laughs> What'd your mom say? You are very dumb. <laughs> I would have drop kicked you. Yes, but <laughs> so quick. have you met me? No one can tell me what to do. Hello, Azara. So she was like, I'm going to just let you fail free, baby. Oh, my God. Yeah, because I didn't wow. listen. I would be sick. She was pissed. I would be so sick. She was sick. She was like, you are so stupid. She called me stupid. She was like, this is so stupid. Mm. I know what I want. We're going to get married and be together Ooh. forever. Ooh. Both of us are not married How to each other. Girl, I was 17, 18. Mm-hmm. That's why I tell people all the time, children are stupid. And so mm-hmm. I... She's Neither one of us first hand experience. I know. So for a year, then we broke up. <laughs> yeah. Of course we did. Yeah. And no. then, yeah. So I had a gap year where I worked and then we broke up and I went to Wright State for dance and journalism. So I was back on track. Like, okay, okay I'm back y'all. And then <laughs> I found out I had Crohn's disease, got super sick, got down to hundred pounds and had to move back home. And then, so that was start over again. Right. Then my sister passed away. I moved to New York. I'm back, back y'all dancing again. Got a, my dream job was teaching dance. Mm. Got pregnant with a mirror. Sneakily having sex. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's when I was having sex with Chia. But then I got pregnant. <laughs> Sneakily. Moved, moved secretly having sex with Chia. Moved back to Ohio. Started over again. Yeah. And so then when I was working hard and then Chia was like, I think you should go back to school because it's important to you. And you keep talking about how you don't want our daughter to have her black mom doesn't have a degree, but her, her husband had like, you know, I didn't want her to be like, okay, like my black mom doesn't have a degree, but my dad does. And he's not black. So I was like, mm, okay, I'm going to go back to school. Say it? You said what? Is that how she was going to say it? I feel like that's how I think mom. in my head. I just, did, it was my own stuff. Like I'm black yeah. and I'm My mom, she's black. She doesn't have a degree. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but my dad, <laughs> he does. You know why? Cause you always fill out those paperwork and it's always like, what's Girl. your dad's education? Mom's education. I'd be like, mind your business. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> she dumb and black. Like, no. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh, that's Lord. how I thought. And you were for that one year. <laughs> yeah. All I was dumb and black. When oh, you don't gosh. go to school for your boyfriend, that is dumb. Please. Um, <laughs> and especially when you're not together. And then, yeah, so what, by the time, to answer your question, that was very long-winded, I was just devastated because I was, like, happy to move to L.A. because I was happy for Chia because the group that he was managing got a record deal. That's the pinnacle when you're managing a rap group in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. They get a yeah. sign in university. You're like, heck yeah. It moving is to Hollywood. Yeah, let's go. This is right, a big yeah, deal. Right. And then the group broke up. <laughs> Dang. Like a month into us oh living here. Yeah. Shout out to G- Chia for keeping his day job. He has never quit his day job. Thank you, Jesus. Um, and so that has carried us through the ebbs and flows of Ashley working and not working and working and not working. But yeah, I was I was super devastated. Like, who wants to keep starting over? Like, mm-hmm. again and again and so again. So when you mm-hmm. moved here to mm-hmm. Los Angeles, yeah. uh, Amira was how old? uh five she was six or something like that she was five chia was working and Mm -hmm. you were doing influencer stuff i started that's when i started my blog got it that's when i started watermelon egg rose i think i started maybe six Mm -hmm. months prior to moving here because you saw it yeah and i really you had only had it up for six months like yes maybe six months to a year i started it like what year was this oh i don't 2015 2014 so i think i started my blog in 2013 yeah okay okay. yeah Mm -hmm. i started on facebook notes do y'all remember when facebook had facebook notes i I never used facebook what girl Girl, that's how that is how i my sister passed away in 2007 and i i i just um kind of captured my entire grief experience so notes was kind of like pre-blogs yeah. nobody really had a blog back then you just use 
Facebook note mm. and you would just write. Yeah. And I gathered like a huge following because I was just, go I was like live downloading wow. my entire grief mm. situation mm. like this. And it was very raw. You know what I mean? Like I, I hate her husband or her fiance, like everything I felt in the moment was getting put on Facebook. And then somebody was like, you should put that on the blog. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on a block. Yeah. And then I was still grieving and then it yeah. transferred into like my motherhood journey and then it kind of took off. So when you were mm. writing the blog mm. and you were living here, do you consider that being a stay at home mom? Like, like is being mm. a stay at home mom, like not working outside the house? Is it working wherever, but having income? You know what I mean? Like how do yeah. we know that's hard. What do y'all think? I feel like, okay. I feel like, cause I was a stay at home mom for a moment and what did that I mean, feel like though? it was yes. still, right. what does yeah. that mean to you? So for me, it was their father was making the money okay. and I was home taking care of the child. It was peace at the time, okay. but I was still creating content. I was still, you know, doing what I'm doing now, but clearly it was the very beginning of it. Mm -hmm. But, um, I feel like I was still working. Cause you just don't get to clock out, you know? Well, wait qu to clarify. Okay. So, but for your stay at home mom experience in your mind, he made the money Yeah. and your, we know taking care of a child is a job. So yeah. let's clarify yeah. that period. But yeah. you were not bringing in a real income or anything was moving the needle in your home. No. Okay. You were responsible no, no. for peace. Yes. All okay. day. Mm -hmm. You're the it. primary mm -hmm. parent, mm -hmm. the default parent, as they say. Okay. So especially for you now, of, um, well, I was about to call you Felicia, and I'm looking at Melanie. <laughs> I know. I was real confused. For Melo? For oh, Melanie? Felony. <laughs> felony. <laughs> for you, Felony. That's my name, though. <laughs> um, so when you're touring and not touring, recording, not recording, because mm -hmm. you do bring in an income in your home, but then you also take care of your children, do you consider yourself a stay-at-home mom? Um, I consider myself a mom that's at home. But not stay. <laughs> why at is home? this so hard for us? Oh my god! Because you want to know why? Because I think that we are coming from a generation where our parents specifically left the home every single day. Yeah. We went to school. We didn't see our parents until it was dinner time. Sometimes, you not know? me, but yes. And so there's there's like a dinner. you know a, a shift in I think I hate y'all. Sorry. I think there's a shift in how moms work now. Yeah. And especially yeah. since COVID, like everybody can kind of be a stay at home something yeah. it, to some capacity yeah. because we work, a lot of us can work from home and we're also a very siloed community right in here. This <laughs> specifically because we're all creative entrepreneurs yeah. um, in our own rights. And so that's, you know, a, a different thing. Like my kids will never, ha this is the closest thing to a consistent office I've ever done in my whole <laughs> right. life. Yes. No, I feel oh, that. Not me. Well, not in my Same. whole life. Cause I definitely used to work in an office um, <laughs> when I was 18. Um, but while I was moonlighting, doing music, <laughs> Uh, it's a whole many lives, uh, but you know it's it it is a real thing. I think the the conversation of what shifts. So like, does stay at home mom mean you're not working for an income? So I think to the flip of what you said about we come from a from a generation where our parents left the house to work every day. Mm -hmm. The alternative was parents or mothers in particular, but I'm sure both, who stayed home with the primary responsibility of taking care of the children, typically not making any income, but obviously that saves money right. <laughs> and lives. Uh, but <laughs> there was a parent that if you stay home and your job is to take care of the children and the home, cleaning and things like that, then that is a stay at home parent, I think, in the way we were all we all grew up. But now that we have these environments where we're either at home with our kids and trying something, right? There's a period that you're writing for on a blog and there's a period that you're posting on, on social media, not making any money or making very little money mm -hmm. that is very gray in terms of stay at home mom or not, right? right yeah. You're still responsible for the kids. You're yeah. not paying somebody to do that. Like, I mean, yeah. if I got to go to the studio at night, I'm not coming home with a check at the end of two weeks. Like I got to make the music to sell the music yeah. to make it, you know huh. what I mean? So like, I'm not, it's, it's an interesting, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. road for me as far as that, like create the creative entrepreneur space is different. And I think that's the thing that our children see and maybe yeah. like, 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 first of all, I'm going to just keep it honest. I know what Jared and I do for a living. When I go to Cameron school and they have like parent child lunches and assemblies in the mm -hmm. middle of the day and it's packed. I'm like, what does everyone else do? <laughs> does anyone else go to jobs? Does any, does everybody got time to go show up to at jobs. the school? Like, I know what we do. We can make our schedules and say, no, I have the thing to do with my son on this day, so I cannot do that. I need to schedule around this. But 
does everybody have that? Like the flexibility of people, I think these days in the workforce has yeah. changed flexibility. Yeah. so much, like changed so, so much. So I don't know, like for me, you know, my kids know, well, Kai is going to learn soon quickly. She'll have the understanding of it is that when I go, like I don't, sometimes when I go to work, I don't come back for a week or mm -hmm. three days mm -hmm. or four days. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I'm out touring or something, so it's, I don't know. It, it, it feels different. I, I'll say this. I feel very grateful that the path my life has taken affords for me to make a living and a life. Mm. I really appreciate the fact that I get to see and be um, proactively available for my children how I possibly can. And I can determine and shape my life in that way. Sometimes there aren't. And I've shared this before. I missed my son's first day of school, period. Like, First day of school that he ever went to and got dropped off, I missed it because I had a performance. And I was devastated. I almost did not go. I almost turned down the opportunity. Um, and, you know, I was pissed off at Jared because he didn't take the photos the right way. We didn't take, like, you know, I was like, how did I miss? What'd you make for lunch? Like, I had to walk him through the whole process even though I was away. And that pissed me off as well, you know? Because I was like, I'm still parenting and I'm not even away. And I still have to be here um, even though I'm not there. So... But I'll say in retrospect, my son never cared that I missed the first day of school. He Ooh, didn't notice. Do yeah. you Not care? <laughs> like right now? No, I'm like, over it. Okay. Like it really, I, I'm, I'm over it because I've been there for so many things and it's like, yeah. it, it would have been nice, but I've seen him experience first days after that yeah. day. Yeah. You know? But it's hard then when it's it happening. It was so yeah. Oh, I was crying. I, I was mm -hmm. devastated. But when I went to do what I performed at and I saw it and it aired on television and I came home and I like, got that time to myself, I felt so fulfilled as well. Mm. And so that too also is a perspective that I think we also have to consider when it comes to working moms because we don't ever call them working dads. Girl. Nobody calls them working dads. They're just dads, but we're working moms, which is very interesting. Which is probably why we're sitting here struggling to define yes. the difference because it's like because we're always it comes, on. Because comes yeah. from a time when we weren't allowed to work. Yeah. Well, like, okay, you know? so I do feel like it's important. I think we should not say stay at home moms if we're also working only because I know there is a large community of women whose sole responsibility is to take care of their children and they're not being sure. paid for it. Sure. So I, I would gather to say that a stay at home mom is someone that is not being paid for their 24 hour a day job. We all work from home. That's different. Because Wait, I want to, I want to, I'm going to po po poke at that for a okay, second because the 24 hour piece, right? Mm -hmm. We're all on technically at the end of the shift, at the end of the work shift. So mm -mm. my point is, no, 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 no. My point is, okay. I, I agree. A stay at home mom is someone who's at home not being paid for their, you know, let's say traditional work day is the, is the house and the kids. So let's call that eight to six mm -hmm. because the re why are you making that face? Because the rest of us, if we're working from eight to six, come home and then from seven to yeah, because, you back on. because I'm going to tell you why. Uh -huh. And I'm only saying this because I've experienced both things, right? When I was at home, that is, it, it is not the same thing. I'm sorry. Cause I had to explain this to Chia. Cause he would say that I come home and I'm, and I clock in. There is something that happens to you when you are away from your children, whether you're working or not, and it is a mental break. And there is a world in which there are women who are mentally struggling oh. because they are <laughs> with their children 24 seven. Mm -hmm. They wake up, they take care of them all day until they go to sleep and wake up and do the same thing. Now, yes, when you come home, I'm not saying that working mom, because I, I don't even, I honestly don't like the term working mom because everybody's working. I feel like that's low key rude to yeah. women who are at home. Like that is a job because if they don't do it, then you got to pay somebody to do it. And guess what? That's now their that's job. A job. It's called being a yep. nanny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, you're a mom nanny mm -hmm. um, and you're a, a therapist and you're a cook and you're a hair and you do all of the things. You have all these jobs and no one's paying you with physical money. Right? So we're all working women, but I do think that staying home it is different because now coming here on Tuesdays right m my mind is like different yeah any other day of the week than I'm with my children 100%. you get that break even if I'm working whatever there is something that happens to you as a human being when you are away from your children and then you reconnect with them versus when you are with them all day I long agree. and I don't yeah. feel like it's fair to, uh, to compare the two and it's not to take away from either experience but I'm telling you it is it's, it's a different kind of um yeah. 
it's a different kind of something that I happens like, to you. I feel like it's th- the same thing would happen with me and their father. And he's just, I'm working all day. And I'm like, I'm working all day too. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's like, you have to, your, like, your mind when you go and you do these kind of conversations are, I, my brain is being stimulated. My sure, spirit, sure. my like everything is being stimulated. But with the child, it's like I have to constantly stay like at this level of like, cartoons and like uh, abcs i'm like oh my it's gonna drive it like drives you insane like Mm -hmm. i love you but this is a lot i remember for a long time i also would judge myself because i was like why am i not enjoying this more than what i should which is also why i decided "Ah, i'm going back to work but working from home while also being Mm -hmm. that's my thing it's just having something else to do right like something else that's not just in the space of your role as a mother every single day because that yeah. job never stops like you're we're all here still talking about our kids thinking about we got to go pick them up and do all these things so it never stops but I think what Ashley's saying which I totally agree I remember when I first had Cameron I would go to the grocery store and I would talk to the cashier for hella long <laughs> and I'd be like why am I talking to the cashier this long I was like oh because I'm at home you know, not touring yeah. at the moment. I just had a baby <laughs> and all I'm doing is sitting around listening to nursery rhymes and, and playing. I'm like talking to another adult, mm-hmm. being around somebody else outside of this yeah. realm of just being in baby and child world all day was something that my spirit needed. Now, some women, I'm not going to speak for, for everybody, and some people actually love it and live for that. Yeah. And it's yeah. what fuels them. And that is their joy to be able to do that. And we see them on TikTok. God bless. <laughs> okay. However... <laughs> Not my ministry, personally. <laughs> um, you know, I think to your point, Ash, there is a reconnection point that you come back. I And I've said this on the podcast. I feel energized. I feel like I can enjoy my kids yeah. when I get a break to be myself, even if I'm tired. So that's why when Jared comes home, too, and he's just like, okay, here we go. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but like. It's because you're managing people outside of the day Girl. and then you got to come home and manage more people. So your job is through line, like all the <laughs> way through. My brain is a shift. I get to manage myself. I go write songs and sing and change, exchange energy and conversations and vulnerability. And, and then I get to come home and then I turn on the responsibility of, okay, got to cook, got to do da, da, da. Mm-hmm. It is two separate parts of my brain. Sometimes it's very hard to overlap and switch back in. That's why sometimes I always tell everybody, I'm like, if I were to make the greatest music of my life, I might have to leave my family for three to six months. That like, sounds right. You know? <laughs> yeah. But is that realistic? That sounds yeah. right. I mean, I some, mean some people do on. it. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia's like, we need the album, please. Um, no, because I'm tired some, of asking. Some people will do it, you know? And some people, to, to yeah. um, invest in their creative endeavors, they might need to isolate themselves and go away. And once upon a time, we might look at that and be like, oh. <gasps> How could yeah. you? That's terrible. Especially for a mom. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like you're abandoning your family. But now I'm just like, sis, <laughs> three months out of out of 36 years. Girl, ain't I could nothing. never. Girl. I think about my parents too. My parents left my brother in Guyana and moved to Canada. For how long? A year. Hmm. A year. Dang. Because there was immigration laws. Yeah. They sent for him. He came up. He had to go back because the visa expired. Like, And my parents talk about the devastation that it was yeah. when they thought he was going to be able to stay. And then the government was like, nah, he got to go back. <gasps> like, it was like, it was horrible. Like, was my mom sick. and dad will cry about it to this day. Oh. Um, but when I think about the sacrifice that they had to make to yeah. do that, and yeah. it's like, sometimes you got to do what you got to do for yeah. yourself, for the for the long-term goal of your family, for yeah. the long-term yeah. goal of yourself, you know? Yeah. And, and now I think... We have more, I um, we have more examples of what that looks like, especially for women. Yeah, that women can be gone and do things, and not to say that it's not hard. Mm-hmm. It's very hard. I think when you want to, and we talked about this too, Ash. When you, the most stressful part of being a mom is trying to be a good one. Mm-hmm. Okay, because if you don't really care and you're just gonna be like, whatever, just leave it up to God, <laughs> you know, then yeah. the stress is not there. But it's when you're really trying to do the best that you can and hold yourself to a standard of, I want these people to turn out to be good human beings and I wanna do things for myself. That is so stressful mm-hmm. to try to yeah. do it all. I, you know what? I was just having this din- this uh, conversation at dinner yesterday. I couldn't imagine being a full-time parent anymore now that I'm a co-parent. Mm. Mm. And I think their father feels the same way for sure. Um, like when I do have the kids for, let's say it's two weeks at a time or we switch off, mm-hmm. I'm like, 
I think about y'all. I'm like, I don't know how people are doing this. That's but funny. remember at the beginning when I had yeah. them more often or yeah. when I did have them full time, I, I didn't have that energy. I was like nervous and I was, yeah. you know, sad when they left. But now I just be like, bye. <laughs> but it helps me show up and be the best mom that I can be. Mm -hmm. This layout that we have. I think a lot of times the judgment that was coming was it was clearly self-inflicted of mm -hmm. me being like, this is a good mom and this is a bad mom. But it's yeah. like, no, my kids are like, oh my, they're happy are as the hell. Happy? They're happy, they're healthy. They're like, we actually like being with dad for a week and we like coming to you for a week. Mm. So I felt like I allowed them to kind of tell us what it is that's good or bad, Working. you know? But yeah, mm. I don't know. I couldn't, Im I couldn't <laughs> imagine. <laughs> Listen. Well, how do you feel, Cody? Because yeah, Cody, you work in an office, actually. You work in an office and you travel and you got and you keys. got long hours you got all them kids all of that um, <laughs> um well i i don't know let me figure out how to answer the question because what i've been thinking about is that i've never been a quote stay at home mom from the standpoint of not working mm -hmm. even when because similar maybe similar to you melanie because of what i do it's not like i get a check at the end of two weeks mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. you're making a show yeah. that takes three years to shoot mm -hmm. you know what i mean and so we started filming Black Love in 2014. We also did a, a movie that year too, but that was an indie, so you know, whatever. We ate mm -hmm. <laughs> and paid the rent. But we started filming Black Love in 2014. It was not on TV till 2017. I had Brooks in 2016. So I was doing a lot of work, mm. sometimes with this child on me, and sometimes we would get a babysitter, which, by the way, was Kim Durden's daughter, Journey. Um, and And so when I think about, like, was I ever just dedicated to my kids and not responsible for anything else? Even if that thing didn't bring dollars in right away, I was right. responsible for finishing this treatment or this whatever, whatever, giving notes on something. So I've never been a, a person completely dedicated to just the kids. That didn't mean that I wasn't dedicated to right, the kids right, right, right. while Tommy's doing something else right. and yep. I'm working. Yep. So I'm just trying to wrap my head around like what I relate to the most. And I think at the end of the day, I've just been like working and taking care of them yeah. at mm -hmm. all times. And yeah. now that we have more consistency in an office and more, and once we had a more consistent need for childcare, we do have a nanny. Um, so that we can do get things done more quickly and efficiently. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. To take care of the kids. To take care of it the kids. It all goes back down to right. those little to, to turds. To feed them, to house them, <laughs> to put them in, in, in spring soccer. break camp. In spring break soccer. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. To That's work some wild. more. It's, it's a disgusting well, cycle. Shoot. Then I would say, <laughs> she said a disgusting cycle. I, well, then oh, if that's man. the case, then I probably have only been a stay-at-home mom, let's see, in the 50s. 15 years that I've been parenting, I would say maybe three solid years, and that would be sporadic. Collectively. Yeah. Collectively, yeah. not mm. in, like congruently yeah. at all. Cumulatively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's wild because now that you're saying that, it's like, yes, but I had the blog once it started bringing in money. And also, I used to ghostwrite for magazines too when I lived in Ohio. That's like when I was like, okay, I'm going to get back into my writing. I did a lot of ghostwriting for magazines and it was really dope. I would do music reviews and it was so fun. But not on ghostwriting. I want your credits, friend. Right. Well, now, I mean, I feel like, you know, God will bless me abundantly at some point. <laughs> so I'm like, we need the credits. Gotta start somewhere. It's all part of your journey. Um, but no, I was just happy, girl, to be writing mm -hmm. and to be doing something other than breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. anytime someone Along wanted me to write something, I was like. <laughs> writing while breastfeeding. Yes. <laughs> right. So that's crazy. Yes. Thinking of what you're saying, Cody, I have always been working on something. Yeah. In the creative field, we all know it is, it's definitely a journey because you have to put in all of this work years, three years, right. four years, whatever, mm -hmm. to actually reap the benefits. And then once that comes in, that can help change the trajectory of your life. Yep. But I do just like to make that distinction because my mom homeschooled us. So I actually grew up with my mother in the home 24 seven. Um, I don't ever remember. It's weird. Like I, I remember she used to be a paramedic. And the only reason why I remember that is because like, something bad happened and she came home. And like, that is like a core memory of like, Oh, my mom wasn't home. Do you know what I mean? Oh, she was working. But pri I mean, but my whole life, she was home every single day. Made this breakfast, lunch, and dinner from scratch. Did she homeschool during the day and then go to work at night? So my mom did in the beginning. 
And then when she just homeschooled us, and then she started homeschooling everyone, and it was her life. They, people paid her, and that was her That was her job. I learned to be an entrepreneur for my mom. My mom used to make jewelry at festivals, so we were always at a festival, and she always mm-hmm. had a jewelry booth, um, and she braided the people's hair in the community, and she would make them food. Like, people would pay my mom to cook. So she would do all of that while homeschooling us. I could see all of these. Yeah, things. when was she a paramedic? Oh, um, Cody, like, hold on. Cody's like, give me for a long time. I think I don't. I don't know my age. I feel like she stopped being a paramedic when she had Issa. I was. I think it was that when she had Issa because she paramedic at night and then she got off like in the morning and it would homeschool me because I went to public school until I was like in second grade. You said what? Oh, (laughs) at what time? Third shift at night. Third shift. Yeah. So she would leave at night. Yeah. Yeah, My mom's. She's a G. But that's where I learned that from the consistently working and doing multiple things and also I think it was very evident to me that you to do the things you love sometimes you have to work jobs that you yeah or multiple jobs because it wasn't like I saw my mom making millions of dollars from her dream but she my mom is happy Mm -hmm. and she's not a money person she doesn't care about money my mom made it very clear to us as children I am doing what I love I enjoy working at festivals I enjoy selling jewelry I enjoy homeschooling you all Mm -hmm. I want to be home with my kids she always wanted four kids she had four kids I want to make y'all breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I told you I didn't even know box food existed until I went to college. Like, th- she did she did what she wanted to do and existed as a mother the way she wanted to. And that was important to her, to be there with her children every day. But I am not having that experience. Mm-hmm. I would like to work. <laughs> I have a question. So, all of us work for ourselves. Yeah. Do you feel like, because, and clearly we were working on the things that we're working on now before we had children. Mm-hmm. And do you feel like, because we have children, the blessings just kind of pour in a little bit more. Mm. Since since we've had children from when before we didn't have children, mm. how do you guys all feel about that? Mm. That's deep. Want me go first? I have a short yeah. answer. Okay. Go, go, Cody. No, go. Oh, what do you think? I was going to say, I, I definitely feel like I remember oh, for so long their dad would be like, and he meant, he didn't mean it in – a harmful way, but he would always say, you have to choose between being a mom or having a, like having a career. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't want to choose. I don't want to choose. I just kept, I would just keep saying that. And it was always this fight, this, this tug of war. And so I was putting in so many hours, so many years. And he would just be like, it's not making sense. It's not working. I'm like, no, one day it's going to work. I promise. And then when I dropped Mindful Fee is I was like, okay, see, I told you it's going to (laughs) work. But I do feel like, um, all the energy, the way that I think about it is all the energy and all the love that I've put out into the world and, you know, the the hours that I spent editing or sharing a vulnerable moment, I feel like there's almost like uh, like a godly accumulation bank that was just holding all my blessings until I was able to tap into like, mm. oh, start Mindful Fee. Yeah. Oh, start to do, mm. you know, um, like do partnerships on this level. So I personally feel like there was like a little bank, but I needed to have the kids for it to be like mm. flood, yeah. if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. No, it does. Yeah. Cody, this I'm not making? answering my answer now. Why? Because <laughs> Cody, Cody's like, hell no. no. <laughs> I worked for I to work for. <laughs> it's there's so many I have so many thoughts. And it wasn't about you, but I feel like your answer was so beautiful. I just I need no, to No, share that. yours because <laughs> yeah. someone else may feel the way you feel. No, I mean my my short answer was going to be that I do I always tell people babies bring blessings because mm. My friend Mel, I remember she was like, when Zay was born in January. So she was like eight months pregnant with her daughter Zay when she filmed this indie film that went to Sundance. Like it was all all happening in the eighth month of pregnancy. She's like making this movie. Mm. And I just remember everything that came after that. And just, you know, that's something that she used to say. So I, I held on to it. I had Brooks many years later. And I had Brooks in October 2016, and we uh, licensed the show to own that month. It didn't come out for a year, but that's when it Mm -hmm. happened. And so I definitely always say that as well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, seven years later, (laughs) you know what I mean? So so my answer is kind of around, like, the beginning, right? I do believe in that statement. I do believe that people who maybe are having a hard time or are not sure what's next as long as they're putting in the work. Yeah. Like y- your your baby is likely only making you better. That's yeah. what I mm-hmm. feel. Yeah. Um, 
But child, once you get <laughs> once it gets real, <laughs> I think in the juggle yeah. of 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 the parenting and what it requires and the and the entrepreneurship journey and what it requires, I can't speak for people who like work regular jobs. It's overwhelming. Yeah, oh, one hundred percent. So my yeah. answer is not. There's no flood. There's just. <laughs> there's just it definitely like, comes in um, seasons pieces. for yeah. sure. But also yeah. perspective, right? Oh. Because one would look at your life and feel like it's flooded with abundance, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and I mean, but I I look at your life that way. You know what I mean? I know, and but I also know the hard work that you put into yeah. it. But I also know people who are our age that are where you were at square one still do you know what I mean mm -hmm. um and I, I actually pose this question on my stories mm -hmm. about like what's do you believe in blessings or do you believe that you make something a blessing in your life and I still mm. cannot figure out the answer to this mm. question say it again do you believe in blessings like something is a divine blessing to mm -hmm. you or do you believe you just make something a blessing because it also goes like by choice by choice okay. right so if you think about when we think of blessings, we automatically go to God, right? God, mm -hmm. a higher power. So this is a divine thing. Like you said, mm -hmm. you had a divine bank of, of things. But I also think about um, it all has fallen in line with like, but, but can a blessing only come from good things And when you're aligned with God, right? Because like, I don't, it sounds weird to say, do I look at my sister's death as a blessing? But it has blessed my sure. life. You like sure. find the blessing. Yeah. In yes. It, yeah. Her death has blessed my life tremendously. Mm -hmm. It is actually weird to say that my life has been substantially better since she passed away. Sure. And I think I made a conscious decision mm -hmm. to make that a blessing in my life, not let it be my stopping point, mm -hmm. but the trajectory, like this catapulted me into making my life better. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to live for both of us, you know, type of energy. Um, and also Amira, she's a blessing, but I was fornicating. So then it's like, well, if you're not, you're not supposed to fornicate and have sex before you're married, then how can she be a blessing? Mm -hmm. all of that. But I chose to make her life a blessing. Sneakily. You said what? <laughs> said, you were doing all that. Sneakily. I was definitely fornicating. <laughs> she has to be there since I was 17 years old. Oh. Um, <laughs> sheesh. Not yes. the sound of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing that too. Um, <laughs> that's how we got here. Four kids later. Um, but yeah, so I, I think I'm starting to lean more into, well, you know why? Because The Alchemist is my favorite book and it's always, yes. so good. it always says, and this is, I tell my kids this, when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, the people who are supposed to be around you will be around you. And I firmly believe mm -hmm. in that. I just believe now too that there that you look at your parents. I just see people who are like come from a place where it's like war stricken. She is dad. Like he came here during the Vietnam War and his life has blessed in, in their and his sister who came here with him. Their children and their lives are Oh my God. All seven of these children are successful and all of their kids are successful. Every mm -hmm. single one of their children are engineers and nurses and their, their family is blows my mind mm -hmm. repetitively. Cause I'm like, how they came here with nothing, you know, from a war. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like people just choose at some point you decide this is my circumstance mm -hmm. and I'm going to make yeah. this a blessing I agree. and I'm going to create my child will catapult to me and be a blessing, right? My mm -hmm. child will push me to be better. But there are tons of people who don't have that mindset. I believe and their what children can deter their life for them. Yeah, I yeah, feel I mean, like I think about reality. it the same way. Is really, the way that you think for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, you Melanie? Mm -hmm. uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> do you do you feel like blessings? Like you make the choice. I'm yeah. like I don't know how to say the yeah, question. Like, I, we transfer I'm the question. Yeah. actually, I'm definitely. <laughs> I mean, when it comes, I remember once hearing this thing, like who's to say what's good or bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really all on how you look at it. Like one thing that you feel could have been a, a, an unfortunate event could have, you know, been the deterrent from something yep. far worse or mm -hmm. whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. however you want to look at it. Um, I also was told by my dad that babies are blessings. Mm -hmm. Like all the time. Yeah. He's always like, my dad's like, but, like blessings babies come with blessings, babies. Like yeah. they, babies bring blessings. They do. And I think about when, um, we were having Cameron, Jared had just moved out, um, from Florida and we moved into our place together. And I remember he was starting over at the job that he was working at out there. Um, it ended and he was kind of like building the company that he has now and it was just starting. And, um, he got a job offer in Arizona and like, he had brought it up, I remember, like, while I was pregnant, and then he had told his agent and man manager at the time, like, no, like, I'm not entertaining any more jobs in television anymore, like, I'm done. And then, <laughs> and then we had Cameron, and he gets this job offer, and it was literally, like, benefits, salary, health care, a house, like, all these things, mm -hmm. and we were like, uh, <laughs> you know, like, what are we about to do? Like, you're building this company here, like, what are we doing? 
And I remember my dad just kept saying, he's like, babies brings blessings. Mm. Like, all, and, and I remember we were laying in bed one night and he's like, I don't know if I'm supposed to take this job, but I can just hear your dad saying babies bring blessings. Mm. And we just had Cameron and I feel like I'm supposed to take this job. Like, and he's like, but you know, we're going to have to move to Arizona. Are you okay with that? I was like, listen, yes, I'm okay with it. Like, we're building a family. Yeah. This is my job. Like mm -hmm. where we're going, we're going. We're flights away. Like we can, we'll mm -hmm. figure it out. But I'm not gonna, you know, like why? Like I don't think there's anything wrong that can happen. Now, mind you, we moved out there, and to be honest, getting away from LA, we had no friends, no family, nothing. But we had the most incubated, beautiful year of our lives together mm -hmm. as a family. One which we've never achieved since. Mm -hmm. um, it was so special, and so there is a blessing in that. Yeah. You know, and so when I do think about it, I do think that um, I think creating life in general, when you create anything, I think creation begets creation. And I mm -hmm. think energy begets energy. And it does the momentum of inertia is a real thing. So where you put your energy and what you're doing comes back mm -hmm. in different ways. And that's like karma. Call it whatever you want to karma it. Call, karma it. <laughs> <laughs> call it whatever you want to call it. Um I do believe that the energy there, like this bank of what you're putting into the universe, like you will get that moment in some, yeah. some regard mm -hmm. that satisfies you like, oh, this was all worth it for this, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. whatever that is, whether you are a stay at home mom and your children turn out to be incredibly successful, good human beings. And that's your goal. You did it, mom. Mm -hmm. You know, whether that's to yeah. be like wh whatever it is, whether it's to bring that film to the big screen or your launch your nonprofit, write your book, make your album, tour, create communities, create a podcast. I think it's really important to know that the energy, what you, where you put your energy and your focus is where you will see the results. Mm -hmm. And so that just, mm, it, it you know, it, 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 you just got to decide like where you want to put your energy and how mm -hmm. you want to share your energy. I love that. Right? Yeah. I love we got, I love it. I love that. We no, dropped we got, some gems. I love this conversation. <laughs> oh, sure did. Um, good at you. Good transition. I'm glad you know how to read. <laughs> okay, so loving this conversation, y'all. So let's move to question of the week. Everybody remember, if you have a question, just hit us up on podcast at blacklove.com. That's podcast with an S. <laughs> okay, so the question is, I'm 12 weeks postpartum. And, bo and will be returning to work soon. I'm pretty much an A-type personality and an overachiever. I know I'm going to struggle going to, I, wait, sorry. I know I'm going to struggle going back to the corporate world. Any, inv any advice on how to navigate my new work reality? Cody. Mm, yeah, I was going to say me? Cody. Because you went right back to work. You I did go right back baby. to work, yeah. Uh, yeah, but that was different. I was like shooting, doing interviews and stuff. Um, I don't know anything about corporate life. Well, well you mean, said you last still, time. But you still went right back to work, though. So you can give her advice. Okay. Go back then to work. Let me, let me look at this again. <laughs> I know I'm going to struggle going back to the corporate world. Any advice on how to navigate my new work reality? Uh, Do you remember a lot? I think it was. I forgot you when it was. Your friend on. Kimberly. You yeah. were saying, yes. you were like, I should have said no more. Mm. I did. That part. But yeah. I mean, at this point, she's going back to work. I should have said no <laughs> to that. So first off, check out that episode by the Mama's <laughs> Den, That Corporate Mommy Life, featuring my best friend, Kimberly Scott. Um, but outside of that, my advice would be, like, make sure you have set in motion whatever is going to make you feel comfortable and give you the most peace with regard to how your child is being taken care of while you're at work. Mm. Whether that's daycare or whoever's at home. Like, if it's, that, if it's the mother-in-law that stresses you out, like... <laughs> You got to either make peace with that situation or find a different situation so that you're not at work worried about that. Um, I would say um, set whatever boundaries you need to set as well. Like if you need to be breastfeeding, make sure you're talking to your job mm -hmm. about that in advance. Um, you know, if you need to eat at a certain time so that you can keep your energy up if you're breastfeeding or something like that. But like whatever boundaries and routines you need to set in place, think about that in advance so that you're not super stressed about it um, while you're at work. That's my like two that. cents. It's I not easy. Me too. I think it's interesting to hear in that one sentence how she said, uh, I'm an overachiever. Girl. I'm driven, but I also know I'm going to struggle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is, in, which is I think, something that is very, um, I can understand it because you have this FOMO, like, I got to get to it. I got to, mm. you know, the world that yeah. we live in has conditioned us to believe, like, you got to get to it. And listen, some women, like I said, we said earlier on, some people, they are driven by that. That's a part of who they are, and they don't feel fulfilled unless they are checking that box for themselves, which mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But you heard it, I know I'm going to struggle. So she wants the advice, which I think is interesting in itself that 
I hate the fact that we feel like we have to choose every single time, like three, three months, that's 12 weeks postpartum. Like I, I come from a country where women are allowed to stay home for a year. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you don't want to take that full year, you can transfer that paternity over to your husband if you wow. want to, or your partner. What? Oh yeah. Yeah. In wow. Canada, shout out to Canada. Um, <laughs> And so like a year off is what the government provides. Now you can say, I want to come back to work and you could transfer that joint over if you want to or not. But the fact that women have to decide and cross this bid bridge at 12 weeks it's really is sick. Mm -hmm. insane. Mm -hmm. It's really sick. Here. No, some yeah. women, yeah, yeah, some places it's six, which is criminal, <laughs> Yeah, which really is criminal. Is. It should absolutely be the mom's choice. Mm -hmm. Like I'm ready yeah. to go back to work. I feel prepared. Whoa, 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 I'm not ready. Don't take, I'm still trying to figure it out. Like I haven't slept. I don't feel like myself. I'm depleted. I need yeah. iron. I, I'm, I'm making milk. I'm haven't eaten, you know, like there's so many factors to take in. So I just would add, make sure that you feel ready to go back mm -hmm. and make sure. And if that's not an option and you have to go back to second Cody's thing is like, make sure you feel supported in who is going to be with your child and what support systems you can implement to feel supported mm -hmm. as you transition through and to be honest and talk to your job about therapists and help and breaks and pumping and what time you need to get off what time you need to get off and is change. there a possibility or a world where you can work from home yeah. you know for yeah. a day or a few days out of the month like I don't know I just feel like we're in a new world and we have to advocate for ourselves in a space to be able to design the life we want mm -hmm. um right. and change is not going to happen unless we start to ask for it mm -hmm. and so you know I, I I empathize with this mom because I feel the desire of like I want to be with my kid but I have to go back to work and I'm worried about the transition you yeah. know yeah. so it's real and it will probably take some adjusting but you know ask for help I know that's right I know that's right. I know that's right. <laughs> well, if you have questions, like Felicia said, send us an email, podcasts with an S at blacklove.com. But also hit us in the DMs at the Mama's Den Podcast on Instagram. Go ahead and leave a comment on the YouTube page because you know you can watch us on YouTube. Black Love's YouTube page. Leave a comment. Review. Only hit, say nice things. Hit the like. Hit, hit the subscribe. Like. <laughs> hit subscribe. All of that. Press All follow. <laughs> And on that note, y'all, this working mom <laughs> who stays at home sometimes and lives on the road has to go pick up her child from school. So it's time. Okay. Ooh.